Greetings to all who join with us today as we gather for a healing service. Uh, this is uh, Deacon T.D. O'Connor here from Killarney in the Diocese of Kerry, Ireland. And I am truly honoured to be given this opportunity to share this time with you, made possible through the ministry of Shalom TV. And we include them all in our prayers today. I want us all to join in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear friends, I come to you today in the name of Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit. I invite you all now, whoever is listening, whoever is looking, I invite you now to turn your heart and your mind and your soul to Jesus, aware of his word, very much aware of his word, but he tells us in Matthew 18, 20, that wherever two or three come together, I am among you, I am with you. So we fill our awareness now, we fill ourselves, our consciousness, that Jesus is with us, that we are in the divine family. During our time together, we're going to reflect on a scripture passage from St. Paul, St. Paul to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 2, 3 to 16. A very important passage, takes a little bit of time to consume the word in it, but it is, it is of immense importance when we, when it comes to spiritual healing, spiritual listening. 12 months ago, uh, roughly around this time, uh, I was uh, in hospital uh, with COVID. I was in ICU and I was on the life support for weeks. And I am truly uh, grateful to be here with you and to be able to bring you this experience today. Spiritual communication became very real for me during those times. Spiritual communication, because I say that my conscious, my, I wasn't conscious and my intellect didn't have the energy to think or to communicate. All I had the presence of mind and the awareness was to rest peacefully in the spirit. And Jesus and Mary connected with me and were present with me. So I knew that I would recover. Shortly after being discharged, uh, miraculously came across uh, this scripture, which I had read before, of course, but hadn't really understood it in the way that I've come to understand it. That's why I bring this reflection to you today. Spiritual communication, where the divine communicates directly with each one of us, each one of us separately and collectively as well, because we are all part of God's family. We are all part of the Trinity the intimacy of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So we surrender ourselves now to the healing power. And that's what I invite each one of you now to do, to surrender yourself to the power of Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. So we begin this part of our reflection of our service 
with the words that Jesus gave us in the scriptures. Be our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And as we sit now, gazing at the presence of the Eucharistic presence of Jesus, the real presence, we also become aware that we are gazing at Jesus. So today we have Jesus coming to us in his word, and we have him coming to us through his real presence, what we have been taught and become to know his real presence. And when we consume and devour his word, it brings us into a greater awareness of his real presence. That is why in the holy sacrifice of the mass, we have the word of God prior to communion, prior to consuming Jesus, prior to the consecration, because he comes to us through those powerful words of the priest, he comes to us in his word. I'm also now going to share with you in preparation for receiving the healing of Jesus today, I'm going to share with you a prayer of forgiveness. As Jesus tells us in the Old Father, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. So, my dear friends, Jesus is asking us to forgive. Forgive those who have hurt us. Forgive those who have wronged us. Forgive those who have caused us pain in any way, which may be depending on your heart, may be very difficult to do. And Jesus understands that. But we're coming to him in faith and in hope. And when we present ourselves to Jesus in faith and in hope, then we are given the grace, the grace to forgive. That forgiveness, my friends, brings us freedom, peace, and it places us spiritually so that we can receive the healing power of Jesus. When we ask for the healing power of Jesus, my friends, it's not in any way that we have to beg him. He's waiting for us. His desire is stronger than our desire. His desire is stronger. He wants to heal us. It's our desire to receive our awareness and our disposition to receive his healing. So that reflection, my friends, is you say it after me. I was created out of love by God. Become aware of that. I use your name, was created out of love by God. My loving father loved me into existence. He knew me at the moment of my conception. The person who hurt you was also created out of love by God. So now with Jesus, we forgive those who hurt us. I forgive the person who hurt me. I forgive. 
I am separated now from their heart. I am free from their heart and they are free from me. You may have to repeat this a number of times. I forgive them. I am free from them. I am free from their heart and they are free from me. There is nothing between us now, only an ocean of God's love. I am free to receive God's love. I am free to receive God's love. So now, my friends, I want you to chant with me Jeremiah 17, 14. Heal me, O Lord, and I will be healed. Save me, and I will be saved. For you are the one I praise. You are the one I praise. Heal me, O Lord, and I will be healed. Save me and I will be saved. Heal me, O Lord, and I will be healed. For you are the one I praise. You are the one I praise. Heal me, O Lord and I will be healed. Save me and I will be saved. Heal me, O Lord, and I will be healed. For you are the one I praise. You are the one I praise. Heal me, O Lord, and I will be healed. Save me, and I will be saved. Heal me, O Lord, and I will be healed. For you are the one I praise. You are the one I pray. So now I will proclaim for you the scriptures, St. Paul to the Corinthians. Again, it's 1 Corinthians 2, 3 to 16. I'm giving you this reference because I think it would be good for you to read and reflect on it over and over when we're finished here. Reflect on it over and over. Far from relying on any power of my own, I came among you in great fear and trembling. And in my speeches and the sermons that I gave, there were none of the arguments that belong to philosophy, only a demonstration of the power of the Spirit. And I did this so that your faith should not depend on human philosophy, but on the power of God. But still, we have a wisdom to offer those who have reached maturity not a philosophy of our age, it is true, still less of the masters of our age, which are coming to their end. The hidden wisdom of God, which we teach in our mysteries, is the wisdom that God predestined to be for our glory before the ages began. It is a wisdom that none of the masters of this age have ever known. We teach what scripture calls the things that no eye has seen and no ear has heard, things beyond the mind of man, 
all that God has prepared for those who love him. These are the very things that God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit reaches the depths of everything, even the depths of God. After all, the depths of man can only be known by his own spirit, not by any other man. And in the same way, the depths of God can only be known by the spirit of God. Now, instead of the spirit of the world, we have received the spirit that comes from God to teach us to understand the gifts that he's been given to us. Therefore, we teach not in the way in which philosophy is taught, but in the way that the Spirit teaches us. We teach spiritual things spiritually. An unspiritual person is one who does not accept anything of the Spirit of God. He sees it all as nonsense. It is beyond his understanding because it can only be understood by means of the Spirit. A spiritual man, on the other hand, is able to judge the value of everything, and his own value is not to be judged by other men. As scripture says, who can know the mind of the Lord? So who can teach him? But we are those who have the mind of Christ. My friends, this is the word of the Lord. I found that passage from St. Paul most inspiring. It brought meaning to a lot of what I had been through on the life support because, as I said earlier, when I was on the life support, I was communicating through my spirit, through my spiritual dimension, which God poured into us at the very moment of our conception and which through baptism we received the Holy Spirit. So I just reflect on a verse or two there for you, my friends, where he says, now, instead of the spirit of the world, we have received the spirit that comes from God to teach us to understand the gifts that he has given us, to teach us to understand the gifts that he has given us. My friends, we are enormously gifted. We are a gifted people. We are a people set apart, those who believe, those who believe in the divine as we gaze and as we meditate today on the Eucharistic presence. Just to be aware that in every action that happens in our lives, our loving creator, through the presence of Jesus, is teaching us. I have learned so much of the spiritual dimension of life through my sickness. It's overwhelming what the Lord has taught me. The Lord uses every opportunity to teach us. So those who are suffering today, those who are coping with the challenges of life, with the cross of life, I ask the Lord now to grant his grace upon you to receive his teaching of peace, of love, and that through your challenges, you will 
be drawn and enabled to enter into a deep awareness of the beauty of God within you. I pray that you will feel the presence of Jesus right now by your side. Come into that awareness. We bring all those people through our gathering here today into the presence of the Almighty, into the presence of mystery, where you surrender, surrender all your challenges, all your sufferings to Jesus. I surrender it all to Jesus. I surrender it all to God's love. I surrender it all for the kingdom of God. I surrender my life, my all. I surrender it all to Jesus. I surrender it all to God's love. I surrender it all for the kingdom of God. I surrender my life, my all. Jesus has granted us the grace to surrender, to depend totally on his healing power, to be able to relax totally in the mystery of the future, whatever the future brings, my friends. God's grace will be there before you. God never brings us where his grace doesn't support us. You will never be abandoned. I thank all those in the technology industry today for enabling us to come together in the presence of Jesus. His gifts are overwhelming. His gift of technology his gift there in the transmission of data around the world is a, a treasure and a gift that was always there, but it has been discovered by science and by people who can use it today for our benefit. So, we finish and I conclude, my dear friends, through imparting a blessing of Jesus upon you. Now receive his peace, his love as a gift to you. Receive that peace into your soul and into your heart. And we do that through the sign of his cross of freedom where he was crucified for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Let us keep us all prayer. You pray for me, and I pray for you. God bless you.
Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, 